Hey everybody, my name is Leif Jensen. I'm the singer in You Center from Germany and the Netherlands. Uh, you guys are all listening to The Metal Bloodshed with Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio. Stay tuned for some really good music. Hi Leif, uh, thank you very much for accepting this interview and welcome to The Metal Bloodshed with DJ Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio. Thank you very much for having me, it's a pleasure. Germany is a due sentence, the product of a sole remaining founding members, vocalist Leif Jensen, have always been a solid, dependable, modern thrash death metal act since their 1996 debut album Immortal. The band played headlining shows, tours all over Europe, North America, Asia, and festivals like Hellfest, Wacken Open Air, Party Song Open Air, Neurotic Death Fest, Bang Your Head Fest, Summer Breeze Open Air, Brutal Assault Fest, Into the Grave, Christmas Festivals, Tuska Open Air, Fury Fest, Earth Shaker, Metal Camp, <laughs> Up From the Ground, and also New Jersey Metal and Hardcore Fans with acts such as Overkill, Edge of Sanity, A Morbid Angel, a DSI, Six Feet Under, Zing on a Mart, uh, Nat Flakar, Brutal Truth, uh, Dismember, Annihilators, <laughs> Erkan Arkani, uh, Immortal, uh, Dead, Tankard, Fader, Cannibal Corpse, Nile, Destruction, uh, Cryptocy, Grief, Aborted, uh, Visania, Hurt Locker, Nevermore, The Flash, uh, Nightingales, and many, many more to say. But life, more than two decades that uh, the band has been formed. Tell us how do you feel when you look back and see all the bands has achieved with up and downs, uh, lineup changes uh, to have work with different producer, record labels, recording studio, not to tell all the concerts, the tours, the festivals you have played at. My question, do you feel New Santos has accomplished all its goals? I would like to say yes. I mean, our one and only goal when we started out was to, you know, have fun with music and be more involved with the scene. So I think that we have, you know, accomplished that goal. Yes. Right after the release of Invocation in 2010 and 2012, four members has left the band, leaving to a dramatic lineup change. What was the reason of the departure of four of your five members in so short time? Like, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it was different reasons for different people. It was, you know, a chain reaction where the band was based on a sort of a pyramid type of model, you know, and then when, when uh, shit hit the fan and it actually hit it really hard, then uh, I guess some people realized that it wasn't their problem anymore and decided to, to exit the band. You know, I think one member change led to the next one. We were eventually contemplating continue with a couple of those guys around the time anyways, but the chemistry just wasn't right. It was a time that was asking for a change, and that's why we had to restructure the band completely, and I think it was for the better, you know. The band had to run its course around that time. You reunited with longtime friends Marvin Friesner, who also played for Severe Torture and Blue Torch, who had stepped in as a replace live guitarist before and tours in 1996, 2002, 2005 as well, as providing gas leads to the issue of four album. Riza expressed a desire to take a greater role, so you allowed him to step in a major way on Icarus, assuming full songwriting duties as well as assembling the band's new lineup. Outstandingly skilled drummer Kuhn Herbst, who also played for Epica Armin van Buren, who was enlisted as a local friend by Friesde, brought alongside bassist Joost van der Graaf of uh, Creep Mine and Sinister. For the Icarus session, Rory Hansen, ex Blue Trotch, completed the reinforcement group lineup after the album recording as second guitarist. The three remaining new band members all performed together in the band I Chaos and marked a tight unit with some of the best musicianship ever featured in the ranks of New Santa. How come you decided to reunite with Marvin Friesde for the uh, reformation of the band in the beginning of 2012 and to have gave him a full songwriting duty and as well as assembling the band's new uh, lineup? It was the most logical thing to do. I mean, Marvin has always been there for the band, sort of as our favorite joker type of player, you know, whenever we needed somebody to help us out on the guitars for touring or for anything else. Like, he was there, you know, so... so he was there always. 
Yeah, yeah, and you know, and he's he's an old friend of mine, you know, from the early beginnings of the nineties when he had his his first band going, and you know, and we were just starting out with you centered. So um, yeah, I, I think you know we were on the phone like talking about how we're doing, you know, what what was up, what was happening with the bands, and then I I basically just told him that um, our lineup was falling apart, and one conversation led to the next, and all of a sudden he seemed available and interested in in, in you know taking charge, and that was, that was cool, you know, that was that was like he basically saved the band around the time because I was ready to give it up uh, because of the lack of energy, because of how the last lineup had folded and collapsed. He basically was responsible for like bringing the band back, you know, and giving it giving it a breath of new life. You know, that was a very tough task. Um, yeah, but he's got big feet, so he can fill those shoes. You know, no, the band is full of Dutch. I mean, but they're doing a great job. What's wrong with being full of Dutch? Come on, <laughs> you know, we are Dutch, so we that's that's like part of the family. Exactly. That's that's what I was sitting at it. No, but you know, uh, honestly, I live not far away from the border, and you know, the band is very nice guys and very nice musicians, and that's what matters the most. You know, the nationality is an irrelevance in, in our, you know, nowadays in our times. But in the end of the day, you know, the band is more near now to me, also logistically and territorially, than some of the earlier lineups because you know, Germany is a big place as well. So you know, we, re- we rehearse in Den Haag in Holland, so it feels like it probably, in theory, is a Dutch band now, but that's. that's That's cool, you know. It doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> maybe, 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 you know, maybe by four fifth of the band being from the Netherlands, we are going to be able to play in Aruba one day. You know, you never know. That 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 would be like the best thing happen ever happened here in Aruba. Dude, who goes up? We're gonna be there. We're gonna be there for a couple of cheap cocktails. No problem. Well, let me tell you one thing. I I'm busy planning something big, and believe me, you're gonna gonna get a call of me live. Would you please come over? Sure, man. We're gonna be we're gonna be there, and I'm not gonna say in a second, but it's gonna take a couple of hours, you know. But but we would eventually try. Why not? You know, we have never been there, so that's that sounds like a good challenge. Um, the other fact that uh, three of the guys Kun, Yost, and Rory had to work together before in I Chaos make it easier for them to slot into the new center set up as a complete unit. Yeah, probably. I mean, the guys, the guys have a great interaction with each other. Uh, you know, s- similar level of skills. So, so everybody's like really in good terms. And you know, the very tight rhythm section between Yost and Kuhn, so that helps. You know, and I think Rory and Marvin make a great guitar play team. So, uh, so yeah, it, it helps us avoid problems like people not fitting together, like help helping um, helping the mood and also the scheduling between different duties and different projects. But it, you know, eventually around this time I would like to say that since the atmosphere is good in the band that's what matters the most you know if, if people are happy then you can you can also create good results do they still play in uh, I chaos yeah yeah they actually they, they yeah, actually, no? they just recorded a new album their second album and they're gonna be finalizing it this summer so so yeah they, you should also be able to hear some new stuff from I chaos very soon you know it's a great band do you send us current members Leif Jensen yourself vocalist Marvin Wiesner, lead guitarist, Harry Hansen, a second guitarist, Joost van der Graf, bassist, Kuhn Herfs, a drummer, a German treasure, Dio Santos will release their 10th studio album, Intermination, on June 12th in Europe via Metal Blade Records and on June 30 in North America via Prosthetic Record. The CD was mixed by Dan Swano, Uni Sound Studio, and feature cover artwork by Gustavo Saez of Abstracta.net. Intermination tracking list is as follow. Declaration of Intent on a Collision Course, Scars of Creation, Effective Gravity, Means to an End, Ode to Instinctions, Demon Seed, Power Search, Ruptured Perpetually, Living Lies, Atavistic, Reborn, Rehydration Sickness, <laughs> that's a repulsion cover. A bonus track which only features on uh, vinyl and digital versions, those who will not see a survival reaction, a soulless cover. Element of early Metallica, Testament, Lay Slayer, and variety of European metal influences shine on this dark, aggressive release. Intermination song feature fast tempo, vicious and blasting guitar riffs, and hateful 
unintelligible gruff screaming vocals. Live, what could you tell us about the songs on this new album? And do you believe Intermination will become the band's most successful release to date, including your 2003 release Impact, which has been considered by the media's Gil Santis' best album so far? I don't know. I mean, eventually time will tell, you know, at the moment uh, we're just, you know, happy to have the album ready and, and coming out, you know, to, to see how the material is accepted and how it does for us in live shows. But um, yeah, it, it's really not, not up to me to, to, to judge the impact it can have, you know, with the listeners. Hey, personally, I can tell you, I think it's a very fair representation of where the band is at, you know, like I think it shows a very dynamic team at the moment and the material is really intense. Also has a couple of new elements for the band, which I think from time to time makes it to to keep things interesting for everybody. But yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the rest uh, will show, you know, like on on the gigs, on the upcoming gigs, we'll probably uh, we'll probably be able to to um, present the material and see how it does, you know. Uh, but, but just to correct you real quick, the uh, bonus tracks will not be on the vinyl. The bonus tracks are on the digipack in Europe and are on the digital download version, like on iTunes and, and stuff. Like that, but on the vinyl, the album comes with comes with 13 songs exactly. Not on the vinyl, okay? All right, all right, that's correct. I want to say hello to Marvin if he's uh, listening or if he's in the chat room with us. Yeah, actually, he was online for a second. Maybe he comes back and I can switch him into the conversation. Then you can even speak a little bit of Dutch. How did the songwriting, mixing, and recording for Intermination went, and what have you done differently than your last album, Icarus? What is different on the material? Yeah, what have you done different? Um, well, I, you know, this time around, eventually, everybody was more involved with the writing of the material, with the composing process. Last time around, the album was created pretty much out of the necessity of a new group together from scratch. You know, Marvin assembled the guys, and then at the same time, he was responsible for all of the songs, all of the um, all of the writing. For the complete album on his own, you know, this time around, with everybody already knowing each other um, for a couple of years and having played together live, I think I think everybody was more motivated to not only you know play his instrument and do his part, but also to contribute to the to the group thing. And you know, Rory wrote three songs on the album. Uh, Yost wrote three other songs on the album, while Marvin did the rest. So it was it was a situation where everybody had a little bit to to uh, deliver and contribute, and I think that this helps, you know, for the material to be more vers- versatile, more like, you know... Everybody was more relaxed. Not, not only more relaxed, but it was also, you know, the, the material had, had more to offer. And I think we had a bigger pool of ideas to, to take from. And everybody, you know, just was just eager to do 110% of his best to make this, make this a step forward to Icarus. You know, Icarus is a great album, we still like it. But, you know, I think this one, it shows a, a full band getting involved, getting involved with, with the songwriting process. Unlike Icarus, uh, that was produced by Iken Jorg and uh, recorded at uh, Sound Lodge Studio in 2012. With Intermination, you went back to work with Dan Swano at Unison Studio. How was it working with Dan Swano again and why didn't you use the service of Iken Jorg this time again? It was just, uh, you know, coming out of the, out of the interest of doing, doing something new, basically. Like, we were always very happy with Jörg as a producer, so, so no problems with that. He's a great guy and a, and a good friend of ours. We simply had the impression that we were, we were ready to self-record and like self-produce some of the songs, which is why we tried to basically demo out this new situation for the Insurgent release. You know, we did an EP with cover songs and live album one and a half years ago. Yeah, well, I'm, I must say, congratulations, a very, very solid album. Thank you very much. Yeah, this was the first time that actually, you know, the, the two new, new songs that were opening that release are uh, basically the first couple of tracks that we recorded for the new album session. And we basically used Insurgent to test and demo the material, and uh, then we felt ready to uh, do a full album, you know, with Kuhn having made a, an own studio setup in the meantime, so we utilized his studio for the for the recordings of Intermination now, and uh, yeah, basically, basically we're able to be ready enough to um, bring everything on the plate around the same time, you know, so 
I think I think you know reconnecting with Dev Spino was something organic and cool to do because he's an old friend. You know, he was guest singer on one song on the Icarus album, and you know it goes back to 1998 that he mixed an album of ours. So the second album that we did, the second album that we did called Innocent, he was the one mixing it uh, after we did a tour with his band Much of Sanity. So it's, it feels like a lifetime ago. You know, it's like a different life almost. But it was cool to have him a part of the team uh, for this album, and I think he added a really good dynamic organic sound uh, which you're very happy you know to have on, on, on this record album of 2013 insurgent i i love the the live songs i mean uh so turn to ashes sworn to obey any any one of them a storm within cities of the dead are incredible songs i mean uh, and i like the way you put them live thank you very much i mean you know hello hello marvin welcome to the team hey marvin hey meister how goes it all is good hey how is it Dit is DJ ja. Vampire van, van Metal Messiah Radio, van Verenigde Staten, maar ik, uh, ik zit in, in, in Aruba. Oh, oké, okay. lekker. Ja, yeah, lekker, lekker warm hier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we have a deal going, you know, he can book the band for a show if he gives us enough pina colada, you know. Ja, yeah, that, that would work. 
<laughs> Marvi, welcome to the <laughs> to the group. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, like I was uh, just telling uh, live that I, I love so much the, the last album, the compilation album, actually, Insurgent, especially the, the live tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, you know, like, it's actually good to hear because we wanted to present the new lineup of the band playing the, the, the older songs, you know, with those live recordings. So, so the idea was to, you know, stress out to people that, you know, the center is still there, that we you know, are a live band, and to present how we play the old material with the new lineup. So it's, you know, it's a rough recording. It's pretty, pretty damn live, actually. It's not, you know, there is no re-recordings or stuff like that on, on those songs. So it's good to hear that you like Yeah, I mean, I saw the band live, you know, to just repeat this at uh, twice, like we talked at Wacken, and I saw you guys very close, very close at the Into the Grave in Leeward in the Netherlands. And I, I still remember that it was on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, I remember. I think you guys played very early, like around two or three, right? Yeah, we were the we were the second band, uh, I think that day. The second band, right? Just just before before Enslave, right? I don't. I, I, don't I think that was the remember Enslave were playing there, but there we go. Yeah, Enslave played there, and Corrosion of Conformity was in between that. Yeah, there was Bolt Thrower as well. That member. And I have a really shitty memory. I think I was telling DJ Vampire before that this was our first show. Ah, yeah, there was that, that that was the that was the third show in this lineup. Okay, uh, we, we, we did two festivals before that, and then we had uh, Into the Grave. Ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. It, it, good, good to have you join the interview, because then you can rectify all the stuff that I'm saying. There you go, man. It was great uh, for me to see you guys live, you know, for the very first time, actually. That was our, that was the second, I get, you know, I'm confused, sorry, confused. I don't remember which one was the first time or the second time. And Wacken wasn't the new lineup, was was the old, older lineup, right? It depends on what year it was, but um, to be honest, you know, like they have the saying here in Germany, you never forget your first time. <laughs> you should you should also have that saying in Aruba, you know? No, your first time was what, like 10 years ago? Oh, really that long? Yeah, then it would have been the old lineup, yeah. It must have been like two or three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that would have been the same, the same lineup, I guess, yeah. The saga continue with the album name. <laughs> Started with a nine. <laughs> Why does every new sender album begins with the letter I? Does it have something special that the meaning, uh, the letter I? I? I guess so. You know, what it is, I cannot tell you, but there is some magnetism, like some something that has kept us going with this thread. You know, it became like a trademark for the band, I guess. It's, it's your 10th yeah. album, come on. And they're all with eyes. Crazy, man. I actually, actually, it's the eleventh title because I think Insurgent is is not even you know part of the ten albums. You know, so. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, I, you're right. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. You, you know, you know what? I was thinking on the symbolization demo back then. We fucked up. You know, we sort of like we should have called that differently. But I don't know. It's just you know it it it, it progressed to become a um, a thread. You know, at, the, at the beginning, it was just supposed to be two albums or three albums that are tied together with this idea. And then, you know, we never split up. You're married with the eye. <laughs> That's a good reason, yeah. But, but you know, hey, we're, we're happy to give up the to give up the concept if we run into something else or if maybe, you know, for one of the upcoming releases, maybe it doesn't fit anymore. So it's not like we're married. You, you know how it is these days. You know, one day you're married, the other day you're divorced and you're married again. And it doesn't really matter. No, but believe me, people like it. People like it. I, I self as a DJ, I like the concept of, you know, okay, what's, what name is, is new sentence coming up next year with for the new album? What kind of I name? <laughs> you know, you keep wondering. Cool, man. That's good. That's good to know that at least it doesn't go unnoticed. <laughs> no, believe me, your fans, they see everything. Very cool, man. Okay, you released two songs so far. The first single was on a collision course and the recently affected Gravity. How is the fans and media respond to the album so far? Uh, Marvin, how is it over there in Holland? Yeah, well, uh, as far as I can see now, like the, the first one uh, on a collision course was the, like really exciting for us because it was the first song from the new album and we were really anxious how people would react to that. And 
as far as I see now and uh, the people I spoke to and we played it live once now it really went down great and people like it and they compare it to the old stuff a little bit of a new twist but uh, everybody seems to like it and it goes the same for this for the second song in fact gravity okay you receive some awesome review on some metal magazines uh, I gonna mention a couple New Sentence Curve Rising, State of the Art, Attack Slam and Slays with more force than ever before on Intermination, Trash Metal's cutting edge is sharp as fuck, Metal Hammer UK, Intermination is the next trailing chapter in the long history of the band of the best and most consistent trash act from Europe, Rock Hard Germany. Actually, uh, I want to say, how is the excitement among the band members concerning the release of the new album and its outstanding reviews? Well, you know, we, we are excited, you know, because it's it's our latest songs and, you know, we're, we're happy to share the music with the world and to get feedback for it. But, you know, I, I don't make my personal satisfaction depending on, on, on what people think or what the media thinks. Um, obviously, it's always nice to have good feedback, but um, personally, I'm, I'm in a good place. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the songs. I'm proud of what we accomplished and everything else from now on is just a bonus, basically. You know, I, I don't... I don't need the padding on my back too much, you know. It's it starts to hurt after a while. The album's coming out in two weeks, so it's like it's like the final it's like the, the final um, you know run now. So it's it's gonna be cool to to have people get the whole flow of the record, not just a couple of single songs, because we're not a single song type of band, you know. I think I think if you have a chance to listen to the full flow uh, and the dynamics on the album, you will have a better impression of the new material. For you, Marvin, I think that iedereen eigenlijk van, van uw band en die andere drie muzikanten, ze zijn nog in die andere band. Dat heb ik al aan, aan live uh, zo net gevraagd in I Chaos, toch? Ja, klopt. Ja, klopt, hè? Oké, okay. en iedereen is nu eigenlijk met veel enthousiast over deze nieuwe CD. Ja, zeker. Ik bedoel, los van of hij nou wel of niet in andere bands spelen, dat, 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 dat maakt in principe niet, uh, niet zoveel uit. We hebben gewoon voor docenten, dat is gewoon uh, ook, ook ons band. Uh, we doen het nu al wat jaren en ja, we zijn super enthousiast over wat we hebben gemaakt. We hebben ook de afgelopen, uh, ja, afgelopen jaren hebben we gewoon goed nagedacht over wat we wilden doen. We hebben goed nagedacht over wat we allemaal gaaf vonden aan de band, wat de sterke punten zijn en wat we ermee wilden, uh, hoe we dat verder wilden nemen en dat we er ook weer een nieuwe dimensie aan toe wilden voegen. En we hebben gewoon heel veel gepraat over de muziek, we hebben heel veel gepraat over de vibe. En hoe we de band zien en hoe het is nog steeds dat we het vanuit het perspectief van een fan gewoon benaderen. We luisteren uh, naar de muziek als een fan en we maken een plaat op de manier van hoe zouden wij een nieuwe docentenplaat willen horen. En dat, dat hebben we gemaakt. <laughs> dat is goed. I, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> hey, 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 dat, dat zei ik ook tegen. <laughs> dat, <laughs> dat, 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 dat zei ik ook tegen, tegen Lijf. Dat, uh, ik ben eigenlijk ben ik heel trots op jullie, want jullie zijn Nederlander, dus ik ben ook Nederlander, ja. weet je, een de- klein beetje uit Nederland ben, ben wij hier uh, van Aruba ook. Mm-hmm. Ja, maar dat is, uh, ik, ik vind het ook super dat we het, dat we het zo hebben gedaan, dus uh, daarom zijn we extra nou ja, uh, enthousiast om gewoon weer te gaan kijken van wat, wat we met deze plaat allemaal gaan bereiken. Hey, ik denk uh, heel veel. Ja, ik hoop het ook. Oké, okay, let's continue uh, in Engels. Yeah, don't, don't, don't cut me out, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I try to speak German, but, you know. No, pl- dude, please don't, you know. Don't forget your listeners need English language, right? <laughs> you know, when I was in Gelsenkirchen, I had a lot of friends there, but, you know, I keep trying to, to speak with a lady at the, sh- at the shows. And, you know, I want to try, you know, they try to teach me some, some German, but, uh, you know, it's so hard, I can't remember. <laughs> The, the ladies trying to teach you. <laughs> that is awesome, man. Okay. Uh, you just uh, performed on last Sunday, May 24th, at the MetalCon 3 in Den Haag in the Netherlands, talking about the Netherlands. Uh, actually, no, I think both of you can answer. How was the show there? How did you feel the Dutch fan has supported you that day? To be honest, it was for us a, a kind of a hometown show because uh, all of the Dutch guys in the band come from this area. So 
it's always nice to play uh, play a hometown show. And uh, it, it, over here in, in, in our part of Holland, the metal scene isn't that big. So uh, whenever they uh, uh, come up with something to, to promote a metal scene, you know, and we can be a part of it, uh, then we're going to be a part of it. So it was a really nice, nice show. And then we basically uh, uh, played some new songs and uh, they went down really well. So uh, we're, we're uh, gearing up now uh, to do the promotional shows for the, for the release in Termination. And then prepare for the tour. So it was a nice way to uh, to kick off the new season. Very good. You said that will embark on a European tour under the name Trash Mercenaries, right? In October with Angelus a Patrina from Spain and uh, No Return from France. And additionally, this month actually, in a couple of days, uh, gonna be was supporting uh, Calavera Conspiracy as well as Exodus at some shows. How are you guys preparing for these shows? Well, you know, we we, we have the, the next upcoming shows, club shows and festivals, and uh, this is going to be like a nice introduction for the album. You know, we're going to showcase the new material there. And then apart from that, you know, we have a headline tour in October through Europe, and we're looking at different options and possibilities now, uh, you know, for more international shows and festivals. So it's going to be a little bit of everything. We're always um, eager to play live as much as we can because it is a live music style, you know, and I think our material works the best in a live situation. So I'm sure that there will be a lot of opportunities. Okay, question I ask everyone. How is the metal scene in your hometown of Lower Saxony and in Germany in general? Well, I mean, uh, Lower Saxony, I don't even know because I don't live there anymore. You know, the band originally came from there, but it's been... It's been almost 15 years that I moved to the Dortmund Ruhrgebiet area of Germany. Um, the scene here is very alive, you know, this is the most metal place in, in Germany. Not Dortmund, the city itself, but, you know, the, the bell of, belt of cities around this area, you know, Essen, Bochum, Gelsenkirchen, Oberhausen, Düsseldorf, everything is around here in this area. So, yeah, you know, all the tourists come here, there's a lot of festivals, it's it's a lot of uh, good stuff happening here. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, the, the metal scene is, is as strong as it gets in this area. Life, the microphone of Metal Messiah, a radio is all yours to invite all your friends and fans to support the band and to buy your album, your albums and merchandises and to attend a concert and shows, whatever, your festivals all over the world. Well, th thanks for the, for the support and the attention, you know, like if, if you guys, you know, care about the, the style of music and the band, you know, you can, you can uh, check in with us online, you know, on Facebook or the website. And hopefully one day sooner or later we will see you live, you know? <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Life, for this opportunity. Uh, it's, it's an honor for us to have you here in the interview. Very welcome, man. It's my pleasure. Uh, yes, in the meantime, <laughs> like I always say, metal on. Bye-bye. <laughs>